Good morning. Um, first of all, it's a huge honour to be here today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I, I'm conscious I've got 15 minutes to try and tell as much as I can about this story. And it is a story, um, but I will be around throughout the day. So if anyone's got any questions, please do come and see me. And I'll try and avoid any difficult questions. Um, I joined the John Lewis Partnership back in January 2014. And from that moment, it was very clear that innovation was a, was a fundamental part of the business. What we did in the past in 150 years, but also what we want to do in the future. And I wanted to be part of that, that future. I wanted to be part of the creativity, the innovation, but I didn't want to just talk about innovation. You know, there's a lot of buzzwords in the world, there's, and innovation is certainly one of them. I wanted to create something where we could actually do, where we could actually make, where we could actually make a change in the business. We have around 84,000 partners in the business. I have a team of probably, there's five now, it's just grown slightly. But I see the 84,000 people as my team as well, and hopefully that, that will come out throughout the story. The first thing I did when I joined, I knocked on our CIO's door, Mr. Paul Kobe, and I said to him, I really want a cupboard in the basement. And he asked me why, and I said, because I want to turn it into a workshop. I want an engineer and a designer, and I want some tools, and I just want to be left alone for a few months to go away and find something to play with, something to build. Miraculously, he gave me permission. We went, we went to some shops, we bought, well, we went to John Lewis' shop, actually, and bought a dining room table. <laughs> And then we went to a few different shops to buy paint and we decorated the room ourselves. Um, we're using kit that you can buy off the shelf, but with the objective to actually build stuff that isn't off the shelf. So if I take you through three key areas that we work in, um, experimentation, people, and futures. And throughout the presentation, I'll give you some context in each of the areas. So to start an experimentation, back in March 2014, the I just hired a, a, an intern named Alex, and we were really passionate around, you know, let's, let's go out and how can we cause some trouble? How can we go and build something? How can we go and make something without getting fired? So we went to Blue Water, uh, John Lewis store, and we just walked around. We spent about three or four hours just walking around the store, just watching people engage with products, watching people shop. And then we had a go ourselves, and we came across this proposition called Any Shape, Any Fabric. It was a beautiful proposition, three easy steps. You choose a place card of a sofa, you choose a fabric, and then you go to johnlewis.com on this terminal, and you do the same again. So for us, it was around how can we humanize that technology, not to the point where someone can just use johnlewis.com, which you can use at home. How can we create a compelling story that people could come in and play and explore and actually use for other use cases? So what we did is we 3D printed, in room Y, um, 15 shapes. We built the shapes from scratch, and then we took 15 fabrics, and then we built an RFID reader under the table. The sole objective was just to see if people would use it. And then what we did is put it into Oxford Street and Peter Jones. And in 10 weeks, um, so it took us about 10 weeks to build, in the 10 weeks it was in store, we generated 65,000 customer engagements. And for us, that was our only KPI, which actually showed us in terms of, if we look back and say, actually, how would we do that different? Right now, we would have worked with other people in the business to actually look at what KPIs would be successful for them. But we didn't want to get fired, so we just put this into store with no one knowing. Now we would do things a lot differently. Um, but you can see on the right that the current proposition, um, the existing proposition, was a terminal. And it doesn't feel very attractive. This isn't something that, that people would go over to. So it was about how can we make it really simple. And it was based on how, how children engage and how children interact with different things. Just to give you some insight in terms of how we did this in Room Y, on the top left-hand side, you can see a Sylvanian family armchair that we bought for £20. Um, and in half an hour, we were able to demonstrate to our director of online what it could feel like if we built this. And he said, I want this by Christmas. So we went away, and in the 10 weeks, 12 weeks, we, we built this prototype, this minimum viable product. And I suppose the unique differentiator about having this team in, in the business is we can build the end-to-end -end minimum viable product. We didn't need to go to anywhere else in the business to, to manufacture the, the, the fabrics to actually help us with the UX. Of course, there's areas in the business that, that do that, but if you then want to, to rely on that group, you start to then spread out the time, and we'll probably still be waiting now. Every now and again, it's probably the two next concepts are quite crazy, so every now and again, something comes on your desk that, that is really exciting, and I suppose on the back of that initial project that we did, 
And I suppose it met its objective because we wanted to build some momentum and some kudos in the business so people could see our skills and want us to get involved in other projects. So we were approached by the comms team to create a bit of a theatrical moment in Oxford Street Store. They were just opening a new home department. So what we decided to do was build a head of design, which was a two and a half meter high head, CNC milled out of polystyrene. Um, and ridiculous to get it in store, just a little side story. We had, to, we had to cut it into six pieces using a chainsaw to get it into store and then glue it back together and then paint it and whatever. Um, but for us, it was a really exciting project. But I suppose the really exciting part was what was inside the, the head of design. So given that we wanted to, to accelerate and amplify what the, the area of the store could do, we created a psychometric test. And I hate using this terminology, but it was a bit like Tinder for furniture, where you could swipe left on something you didn't like, swipe right on something you did. It could be broken glass, damaged wood, colors. And at the end, you would receive an interior uh, design style that was closest to you. You could have that emailed to you. And it was only in store six weeks, which is why we did it out of polystyrene. But it ended up you know, being in there a lot longer than we, than we anticipated. Again, following on from that, something that comes across your desk that you just have to work on because it's so exciting and it's a really good opportunity for your team to express themselves. And ultimately, that is my role, is to help people express themselves in different ways. And the new Lean store opened and the store design team wanted to build something on the staircase, like a digital staircase. But initial designs was a screen, a TV on the staircase that was showing beds, coffee cups. And for me, that was horrendous. Um, so we went away and came up with an idea to actually how can we contribute and create this digital staircase that actually played with the architecture. And given that we only had about five, six, five or six weeks to do it, we came up with this. So we, we, built, we did put screens on the staircase, but they weren't typical screens or typical content. It was an opportunity for us to work with an animator to tell a story across the wall. It wasn't about product or branding. It was just an opportunity to get something into store that was digital, to create a digital layer within John Lewis that you know, helped fuse the physical and the digital. But what it's done is actually created canvases for, for Christmas. So I expect to see the Christmas ad this year amplified in different ways on, on these screens. Yeah, you get the gist. And also in February this year, you know, Different advances in technology, we're constantly monitoring, con constantly looking at how that can be relevant for us as a brand, but also for our customers. How can we revolutionize the way the customers engage with both brands? I've recently became futurologist for the partnership, so work across John Lewis and Waitrose. So that gives a, a broader landscape to work with. So we built a chatbot, or well, Tom, Tom's here somewhere, so he, he built this in the team, in about 20 hours. So it was how can we, for Valentine's Day, create a way to accelerate the shopping experience? And it started to use different, different languages, different tones. I mean, emojis. You know, that's something that John Lewis probably would have never used. But this is something talking to different customers, talking to different people, and trying to create a different conversation. And it's not just all minimum viable products or prototypes. Everything we do, we would love to roll out to all 40 John Lewis stores or all Waitrose stores. So we were approached by our EHT team to look at Smart Home. And this was about 18 months ago now. And we went away and we come up with the idea of creating a thousand square foot of selling space and actually building different housing, uh, different houses styles within this space. So a bedroom, a uh, front door, a kitchen, a lounge area, and actually building little theatrical moments in each of those areas to tell the story. Apologies, you can't really see it, but on the left, the window, there's a nest next to it. So we were able to hack the nest. We worked with Nest to do that. Um, <laughs> to actually recognize when the weather in the virtual window was changing to actually trigger the temperature chains on the thermostat. The, the, the normal retail boxes doesn't let you do that. You can change the temperature, but it doesn't really help give the context. That went into Oxford Street. That's now, that exact same format is in Leeds, Southampton, and Edinburgh. So for us, that's starting to see something that's being scaled back on the back of something that we've done. People, now this, this for me is probably the most important area. You know, in a business that has 84,000 people, it can never be the responsibility of three or five people to innovate. Especially when I joined, it was, innovation was part of our DNA. So how can we become this endemic? How can we help create this endemic across the partnership to think differently, to challenge, to come up with ideas, but how to surface those ideas? It's really, really important, not just to, just to give someone a post-it note, I've got this amazing idea, can you go and build it? No, how can we work together to, to, I suppose, increase our learning agility? That's something that I'm really passionate about. 
And it is. I mean, it's not technology. Technology is great. You know, technolo we've demonstrated in the business we can do anything we want with technology, but it's people. People is so important. Having the right people with the right mindsets, the right ambition, the right motivation to make change, that growth mindset. And that's something that we really try to tap into. So with that in mind, inclusivity is a really key part of our ethos in innovation. How can we not just, again, not just stand here and tell you that, that people and inclusivity is really important? How can we go out and try to meet as many of the different groups in the 84,000 people as possible? So we created a, a Google Plus community within the, within the partnership. We currently have about 700, or I think it's actually I'm lying, about 620 people in this community where we can actually share what we're working on, but also they can share what's, what's inspirational for them. It can be anything. You know, we can comment, we can critique, and cri that critical thinking is really important to make people feel comfortable. You know what, challenge me. I welcome it. I don't employ people to work for me so that I can tell them what to do. I hope, I pray that they can tell me what to do. And on the back of that, you're always going to have value. That starting point, that empathy. If you start with empathy, you will always nail the value part. And that for us is, you know, we're constantly doing these value propositions on anything that, that comes to us, any post-it note. We work with the people, okay, can you articulate the value in what you're trying to do? If no, then it doesn't get worked on. If it does, then we will, we will help you develop this idea further. I suppose the, the key word that we really talk about a lot is curiosity. You know, I'm really passionate with the people that I work with, the people that I engage with across the business. Who has this natural curiosity? Who asks these awkward questions? Who challenges all the time? You know, and I think that, as a business, is so important if we really do want to look at these new paths and identify these new paths. So, this, over the past three months, my role's kind of transitioned into being futurologist, which I'm really excited about. I'm still trying to get my head around what I'm actually going to do. But I thought it'd be really helpful, in, as I started this role, to actually develop a piece of thinking around 2030, looking at the emerging trends, looking at tomorrow. But without looking at tomorrow in a linear way, you know, I get to meet a lot of technologists, a lot of businesses who always come to me talking about the future in a very linear way. Looking at technology today and how will AR be relevant in 2030? For me, I really wanted to make my starting point 2030. What would the world look like in 2030? And there's some really, really tough questions and there is a lot more questions than answers. But if we can now 1% of these questions in the business, I see that as being a big success. And these questions range from, you know, will death be a curable disease? Looking, if we look at the start of the journey, back through the Crimea War, where charcoal was a disinfectant, and actually removing horses from under the hospital was, was the way to actually lower the mortality rate, actually through to now, and then looking beyond, where does that actually stop? You know, and these are some really scary questions. You know, looking at where we see a future where our physical and virtual lives merge, or closer to home, will my four-year-old son in 2013 never get to drive his own car? Will he care? What does that mean to us as a business? You know, what challenges do I need to put in front of our business? Really tough dis discussions. And again, the objective is to never get fired. So there is a, a strategy in the business, you know, looking at the future. And that, and that for me is you know, a breath of fresh air. And I won't loiter too long on this because this is some of the thinking we're trying to bring together. And some of the big questions. Will we see a future where there's no smartphones? Yeah, all the pictures, I'll move on for that one. Um, so it's not just in this team. Innovation is, there are sources of innovation throughout the business, and we want to bring that together. I'm really fortunate for me and my team that we own JLab, and it's a technology accelerator that's run for the last four years. So how can we get closer to, to the startups? Because you know, if you do work with startups in the right way, you can build a time machine, especially if you're working with them at source, understanding the problems that they're trying to solve. You know, depending on in whereabouts in the world they are, you can actually see what will start to come which is being built on customer expectations and vice versa. So you can start to get ahead of the, ahead of the trend. And on that, and my light's gone red, I was at South by Southwest in, in March and this person said this, and it, and it couldn't be more closer to the truth. And we have to explore, and especially a business with 84,000 people, you need that protagonist. And me and my team, we want to provoke that change and we want to get people thinking differently. Thank you very much.